Hello watch lovers, friends old and new, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stian and today we have a beautiful old American pocket watch on the bench. An American Waltham. Now some of you might have seen another video I did on a Waltham watch, but that was a relatively new watch from their late period when they actually made the watches in Switzerland. This one however is a real Waltham if you will. It really represents what Waltham was uh, famous for. Beautifully decorated pocket watches. Both uh, inside and outside. Uh, we will see that uh, this watch is a true feast for the eyes, I think. It was sold as not running. And you can see it doesn't really run. The handset, uh, however, works. And we see this case. It's gold filled. It's beautiful and in really good condition. And the kicker is that I actually bought this on eBay for $75. Yeah, I'm kind of lost for words. This is a watch that's worth much, much more in my view. It was, of course, sold as not running, and it doesn't run either. But just look at uh, the finish of the movement as well. This is uh, really beautiful stuff. We can see that uh, the balance doesn't really want to move much. And there's uh, a good reason for that, or many reasons, if you will. I'm going to look uh, very closely, pun intended, at that uh, shortly. Let's just first uh, get the movement out of the case. The movement is uh, simply held down uh, with uh, two screws. Can be a little bit tricky to get uh, the movement out of the case, however. We do need to take uh, the bezel off uh, first. And then we also need to pull the crown out to the time setting so uh, that uh, the stem, which is actually in the case, gets as far out as possible from the movement. So here we can see on the left side that the stem is part of the case. And that's uh, actually part of the legacy also of uh, Waltham. The company was founded by Aaron Dennison in uh, the mid-1850s. And even though Dennison didn't actually stay very long with the company, it still had a massive impact on both the company and on the watchmaking industry as a whole, globally. Dennison was a very visionary guy. And uh, one of his main observations was that uh, for clock manufacturing, it had become uh, a pretty industrialized uh, process already by the time he started uh, this uh, watch company. But that was not the case for uh, watches. Watches were still made by, uh, let's say, the British model, in which each watch was uh, unique. All the parts were unique, even though they had the same uh, kind of design and the same shape. They were not interchangeable. And Dennison saw that uh, this was happening with the clocks. They were making interchangeable parts. And he also wanted to do the same with watches. But still keep the manufacturing and the finishing at a very high level. So that's what he started out doing. They came out with a very innovative uh, watch, uh, eight day watch. Kind of like the Ebduma that uh, we did on the channel a while back. It was however not a success. And largely due to that, uh, Dennis was actually fired. So he was uh, playing a role in the company also later, but uh, his tenure was actually much shorter than uh, maybe a lot of people think. But before uh, talking more about Dennis, let's have a look at the reasons this watch was not running. This is really, really old uh, lubrication that's completely dried up and even crystallized to some extent. So that creates more of a bond than a lubrication. So that's why you could see that uh, once we took out uh, the pallet fork, the watch uh, train actually started running down. So as long as uh, the pivots, uh, etc., are not damaged by this, uh, this is actually a good thing, because that means uh, probably we just need to service the watch. But let's see. Now, on uh, the train bridge, you can see it says safety barrel. 
And uh, we also see it has some more wheel stuck in the pivot holes. The safety barrel is actually a two-part barrel. So we'll get back to why it's a safety barrel later. Let's just finish taking the train apart. Another interesting uh, part of this watch and uh, American pocket watches in general is the way that uh, the handset and uh, the winding is done. It is keyless, but it's a so-called negative set, also called uh, American set sometimes because it was uh, used in American pocket watches. The main feature of it is that it allows the case and the movement to be bought separately. And that's of course also part of this whole industrialization thinking that customers could buy a nicely decorated movement as from Waltham. And then they could also buy a beautiful case, uh, whichever case they wanted that would actually fit that movement. And then there wouldn't be any problems with uh, the stem uh, crown, that kind of thing. So that's uh, a nice feature of this uh, negative set uh, approach. Otherwise, we see it's, of course, not a complicated movement. It only shows the time. So there's uh, not a lot of parts. It's also uh, quite convenient to work on. This is uh, actually a small uh, pocket watch movement. This one was probably more made for uh, ladies watches. The movement itself uh, is uh, called Seaside. So not a number, but actually a name. And uh, I think the finishing on it is uh, really beautiful. Of course, mostly on the train side, because that's uh, what the customer would see. But still, the level of finishing of uh, this movement is uh, definitely on par with the best the Swiss had to offer at the time. Here we see the barrel. We see that the barrel arbor is uh, integral into the lid. And the reason this is called a safety barrel, just to get back to that then, is that if the mainspring breaks, the power would not be transferred to the barrel arbor, but rather it would uh, go out to the wall of the barrel. So there would be no danger of uh, the train having to take uh, a lot of abrupt force all of a sudden. We also see that this is certainly not a new mainspring. So it's a bit in a while since this watch was uh, serviced, that's for sure. Not sure how long, but uh, the watch movement was made in 1897. That's quite incredible looking at uh, the condition of it. It's really nice condition visually and also looks good uh, technically. So let's clean it and see what happens. All right, with uh, the movement cleaned, I was uh, planning to start uh, lubricating uh, the capstones. But uh, quite interesting, there's a bit of a strange thing with them. So remember that uh, these watches were made largely industrially. And back in the day, these uh, rubies were rubbed in so that uh, there was a little bit of uh, brass basically covering uh, the rubies and uh, keeping them in place. But we can see that this brass is just covering way too much. And this is a problem because if we put a drop of oil in the middle here, the so-called uh, capillary action of the oil will make it uh, flow out to the sharp edges. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to remove this uh, excess brass with an old uh, oiler. Now, of course, we're going to clean it again. But at least we'll be able to uh, put a nice drop of oil in the middle here, and uh, that should help on the, the pivots. So this was a problem with uh, both the cap uh, jewels. So we see the other one as well. Not sure why they have uh, different colors, but uh, this one was on the dial side, so maybe it's uh, slightly cheaper. I'm not sure, so they could uh, kind of hide it 
and let the beautiful red one uh, be shown. All right, let's uh, clean them and uh, oil them and get them back into uh, the balance. I think it should be clear uh, from uh, this uh, view that um, when that brass was covering so much of the jewel, it would be difficult to get a nice uh, drop of oil without uh, it spilling on and being drawn away by those uh, sharp edges. So it's uh, strange that I wasn't uh, done anything about that before. It certainly would not help on anything in terms of both running and uh, keeping time. All right, time to see if uh, the balance oscillates freely. That looks very nice. We can see that this is a Breguet hairspring. It breathes uh, very uniformly uh, all around. All right. We're going to treat uh, the escape wheel and uh, the pallet stones with the uh, fixo drop. So we're going to put uh, the escape wheel into uh, the jar itself and then we're going to put uh, the pallet stones only into the liquid afterwards. And before we're putting these parts into the movement, we're going to clean the pivots a little bit in case there's a fix or drop there, so we don't get any debris into the movement. Now I mentioned before that this probably was a lady's watch, and it uh, will be the watch for a very special lady as well uh, once we're done with it. So I'm actually going to reuse that old uh, spring. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of amplitude it will uh, give us. But uh, it also did uh, seem to be quite uh, strong still, so uh, yeah. The downside is that we have to put it into the barrel by hand, because there's no combination of uh, any mainspring winder that will uh, help us. And you gotta love that color, huh? Nice. All right, to assemble the barrel, we simply press the lid with the barrel arbor into the barrel drum. And then we twist so that the little hook on the barrel arbor goes into that little eye in the inside the end of the spring. And when we feel that there's resistance when we turn the lid, then we know that the eye is properly hooked. All right, let's start assembling the movement. We have this little bit unusual uh, layout of things, but that's uh, unusual only if you're not used to it. Well, duh, that's kind of the definition, isn't it? Yeah, sure, but what I'm trying to say is that uh, if you're used to working on pocket watches, then uh, this, of course, is uh, second nature. 
But uh, for me, I'm working mostly on uh, wristwatches. Uh, it is a bit unusual. But that's also what makes it uh, so fun to work on old watches. Because uh, pretty much every watch you open up is going to be uh, different inside. Not like nowadays, where uh, 90% are uh, just a handful of uh, movement types or movement models. So these two levers uh, are part of this uh, negative set. So what they do is they uh, still move the sliding pinion back and forth, but let's say the opposite way of what it would do in a typical uh, keyless work uh, setup. But the negative set was, as I mentioned, quite crucial for being able to uh, choose your case and your movement. So uh, what it was a good solution for uh, that problem, it's not really relevant today, of course. But it is something you'll come across in pretty much all American pocket watches from that period, so good to know about. So as mentioned, uh, this movement is from 1897. And uh, that was kind of the golden period for uh, Waltham. They actually did really well during the American Civil War supplying most of the Union soldiers with their uh, watches. And uh, they also kept going pretty strong until uh, after the First World War. Although they did change ownership and also name of the company very frequently. Pretty much uh, about as frequently as uh, people change their underwear during COVID. Or was that just me? Anyway, we're getting the Achilles works back together. It's a little bit uh, different, as I uh, talked about before. We need to make sure that the uh, lever there is in the groove in uh, the sliding pinion. And then we should be uh, all set. Let's check that it works. Yeah. Looks all right. I'm going to lubricate uh, the friction points a little bit. And then we can start with the train. I also mentioned that the Denison was known for uh, watch cases. So they actually started a very successful uh, watch case company in uh, England. They provided cases for all the major brands uh, for quite a while. Of course, not only him, because he died in uh, the late 1800s. But uh, his company kept going until uh, the 1960s, I believe, making cases for uh, companies like uh, Gégé Le Coultre, uh, Omega, and so on. And actually, Denison's patents are also the base uh, for the most common uh, watch uh, case type nowadays, where you have a screw down back, a case middle, and a bezel. There are also, um, let's say, rumors that uh, Denison was actually the one inventing the screw down crown. Although that's not really any credible sources for it, but it's uh, mentioned as the inventor quite a few places. So Denison certainly put his mark on uh, watch uh, history, not only with Waltham, but also with uh, the case and potentially the screw down crown. We managed to get uh, pretty much the whole movement back together. So let's uh, lubricate the escapement a little bit. What we do, we put a little bit of uh, oil on uh, the uh, exit pallet stone, and then we'll let that oil rub onto the escape wheel uh, teeth. There are 15 teeth on these uh, old escape wheels. So if we repeat this procedure three times, then we lubricate all the teeth.
Here I'm using oil, but you could also use grease. The important thing is that we don't put too much oil on. It should just be a little tiny bit. If we see slowly, there should be just a little film, just filling the void between uh, the pallet stone and the escape wheel uh, surface. It's very difficult to see, but uh, that looks all right, I think. So with that, we can uh, turn the watch around and put on uh, the motion works. This wheel here is the intermediate uh, winding wheel. So it meshes with the barrel, or rather the ratchet wheel. Off camera, I wound the mechanism a little bit. So uh, then we can put in the balance and see if uh, the watch wants to start up. Yeah, that looks uh, much better. One thing we haven't uh, discussed so far is the dial. Now you uh, hopefully saw that the dial was actually in very good shape. We just need to clean it. And here's like the ultimate proof that uh, working on uh, watches is like an old man's thing. I bet you some time in the past, some old watchmaker was like uh, going to bed for the evening and taking his teeth out and thinking about how he could clean his uh, dial. And it was like, yeah, I wonder how I can clean this tile. If there only was a way. Hang on. Yeah, that's right. We're going to use a denture cleanser tablet. Works uh, great for uh, old animal dials. Do not ever think of trying this on a normal uh, modern dial. It's going to completely ruin it. But for old animal dials, it works very nicely. If you're doing this, just remember, do not use a steel or iron wire. That's going to leave rust. And for an animal dial like this, we also don't have to worry about the printed letters and numerals coming off. At least not most of the time. Always have to be careful what we do, but for this one, it's fine. So with that, we can put the dial back on. The watch also has this really lovely uh, blued hands. There's no paint on these hands. For every hand, we also rotate one full turn around the dial to make sure that the hands are parallel to the dial, that they do not touch on anything or each other. There we go. <coughs> I 
careful, buddy. And don't leave any blood on the dial there. Before we put the movement back in the case, let's uh, clean the case a little bit. With a nice and shiny case, we can put the movement back in. I still really find it hard to believe that this watch is from 1897. But there's a really good uh, lookup uh, registry for uh, Waltham and other pocket watch uh, movements. Might be that the case is newer, but uh, still, it's definitely an old watch. And for $75, it's just almost sacrilege. On the time grapher, we see that the watch actually runs pretty darn well. Not a hundred percent sure of uh, the lift angle for this watch. Uh, the amplitude is, of course, lower than uh, what you ideally would like. But then again, this is not a watch I'm going to sell. It's for a very special uh, young lady, so I'm not going to bother with a new mainspring that's also going to wear the watch more. Oh, there was another uh, tuberculosis outburst. So I actually did uh, mess up something on this watch, and uh, that was a crystal. Because the watch actually had a glass crystal. Which again is something that hasn't been uh, really used in watches for 80 years. So it definitely has been a while since this watch has been worked on. But I uh, found a nice replacement for it. So with that in place, we can uh, put the bezel back on and then we're pretty much uh, done with the watch. Look at that beauty, man. That is really something. This is what uh, Waltham uh, is known for still pocket watches from uh, especially around uh, the turn of the last century beautiful uh, designs very nice finish on uh, the movement and frequently also the case and this gold filled case is almost blemish free very nice Dials of these old uh, Waltham watches will uh, pretty much always say Waltham. They might say American Waltham, sometimes American Watch Company. I don't think they will say Boston Watch Company. That, that might be. Uh, if someone knows, then tell me in the comments. But that uh, leaves the watch ready. So what we're going to do now is uh, introduce the watch to its uh, next owner. And uh, as noted, uh, it's a cheap watch, but I still really would like this watch to be uh, handled uh, delicately and with care, and that might be a challenge uh, for the next owner. Let's see. Here. Here's your watch. Just be very careful with it, okay? Is that the one you wanted? Yes, it's also pretty outside. It's very pretty. Oh, he is so pretty. Yeah. Look at those lines inside. It's very beautiful. It's like flowers, I think. But, but scratch it. Yeah, don't scratch it. Okay. You're not going to scratch it with your nails, but be very careful with it, okay? Because it's a beautiful old watch. You know how old it is? No. It's like a hundred years old, this baby. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Now, before feasting our eyes a little bit more on this beauty, I just want to remind everyone that at uh, www.vintagewatchservices.eu you will find uh, over 100 watches 
at any time. Beautiful vintage watches with warranty. And YouTube subscribers get 10% off. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then clicking like and subscribe will really help the channel. We'll be back with another video shortly. Until then, ta-ta.